What's up, my YouTubian nation? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon 11970 and as always, I thank you guys for taking the time to watch my video. Um, looks like I'm going to have to do the videos this way. I tried to uh, do my usual upload directly from YouTube, and for some reason it's saying I'm not allowed to do that anymore. I don't understand why, because I looked at my... Um, standing and it said i'm in good standing so gotta love youtube they make it more challenging to do videos every day but it's not going to stop me so it's going to take a little bit longer to upload but that's quite all right i'm sure my subscribers will not mind this okay video i want to talk about a subscriber and i'm not going to mention their name talked about when they were watching one of my kind of motivational videos talking about how they've been depressed you know, um, they haven't been able to smile since what happened since Fukushima or 9-11. And they say how it's hard to be motivated to just feel good. And let me say I could totally appreciate and understand that. Uh, for those of you who have been watching my channel since my old channel, Barn on 11967, I went from when I first started that channel, it was back in 2010, I was actually doing... Um, little videos like um, cartoon videos, just comedy. I had no concept of what was going on that I know now. And then back in around April of 2011, I posted a video that's still on this particular channel about uh, some of my coin collection, my gold and silver. At the time, I didn't know anything about the manipulation. I didn't know that there was potential problems in the economy. I was just collecting coins since I was a kid, so I wanted to show off some of my collection. All of a sudden, I went from 10 views to a couple of hundred. Somebody, a couple of weeks later, I was getting people that were messaging me about the manipulation of silver, then the manipulation of government, and one day, a particular person, I'll just use their initial J, uh, contacted me and literally dumped probably about four hours worth of nonstop telling me about corruption of government, uh, what's going on with uh, gold and silver, what's going on with the Vatican, what's going on with law, all this stuff. Now, before that time, I used to play video games. I was one of those people that always bought the latest gadgets, threw my money away buying a bunch of garbage that I didn't need. I bought like I remember back in 1999, I bought one of the first um, high-definition TVs around my area. At the time, it was only 480i, and they didn't even have the high-definition on cable yet. So I had the TV, but it didn't do anything until about a year or two later when they actually put the cable on. So I think it was either 98 or 99. I don't have it set. So I was one of the sheeple. And when I got bombarded with all this information. I went from a the sheeple that didn't know anything to all of a sudden being bombarded with stuff. And at first it depressed me and it angered me. And I spent that whole year, year and a half, this quest to say, all right, I learned this information even though I don't really know about it yet. I'm going to try and alert people. And that's when my channel became a different channel. It went from talking about cartoons and jokes, which I I think I've put a few of them on uh, the, even this channel, some of the cartoon ones. Um, they're not my older ones, but I can always post them if anybody's ever interested. Um, and doing the coins to all of a sudden trying to talk about government, the manipulation of gold and silver. But in the beginning, I didn't really know what was going on, but I was very angry. I was very depressed. It frustrated me to know that things like 9-11 was not what we were told, how the media doesn't always give us the truth, how governments are really there to just make profit off of you. So I can understand where people say it's depressing. But one thing I want you to keep in mind, being depressed doesn't make the air cleaner. It doesn't make the water better. It doesn't make the food and medications healthier. It doesn't uncorrupt the government system. And as a matter of fact, when you are depressed and when you are angry, you tend to be a loner. You tend to appreciate solitude. You stay away from things. You become unmotivated. So you create your environment based on your feelings. 
And I totally understand how it's easy to fall into that trap. And that's what they want. They want you to be so bombarded with it that you are so overwhelmed that you say, oh, I don't know what to do. And since I don't know what to do, that depresses me. And now that I'm depressed, I'm unmotivated. Now that I'm unmotivated, I can't do anything to fix it. And then you either go back to your video games you start drinking, doing drugs, or you just become depressed and alone. You start taking medications or drugs, and you realize you're not doing anything to better society. So if you think about it, as far as being able to understand your emotions, that pain is your body's way of trying to teach you what you don't want. And when we don't listen whether you want to call it God or spirituality or a consciousness or a higher being or a messenger, whatever you want to call it, an angel, whatever you believe in, somebody or something is basically loving you so much that it wants you to see what you don't want. And maybe it can't understand the difference between good and bad, right and wrong. Maybe it's just a singular consciousness. I don't know because I don't have all the answers. I can only go based on what I feel is right. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to resonate with everybody else. So I'm not here to tell everybody this is the way it is. What I'm saying is this is my way of perceiving what I believe to be true. Some will resonate with it, some won't. But if, if something is causing you pain and you keep reacting to it, because the world is full of electricity and magnetism, you ever hear the saying of be careful what you wish for, you might get it, or ask and you shall find? Well, if you think about your prayers or your thoughts or even your words as nothing more than vibrations, because that's what they are, and vibrations is no, no more than energy condensed at different levels, and magnetism, which is what holds the solid form of the universe together, if you want to believe there is such a thing as solid, because technically it's just an illusion, because everything is nothing more than atoms, which is made of electricity, just condensed. But anyway, if you think of your thoughts or your prayers or your the way you conversate as a message of electricity, a vibration sent out into the universe or the atmosphere, magnetics brings back what you are sending out. It's like a signal bouncing back. So if you keep saying, oh, woe is me, and oh, I'm depressed, and oh, all these things always happen to me, and oh, every time I go to work, I always hit the red lights, and I end up late. Well, what you're doing is you're basically saying, this is what I want, even though I don't think I want it. And it keeps sending it back to you, saying, here it is. You keep asking for this, so you must want it. Think of it like the consciousness of like a computer. When you type something into a computer, it doesn't have emotion in it. Like you could type in your computer, oh computer, I hate you, I want to kill you. It's not all of a sudden going to get scared and try and run away. It's not even going to perceive it. So just imagine if you were speaking to a robot that we have, we create a capability where it can understand, it can comprehend, it can even resp respond to your thoughts. And you say, oh robot, I'm going to kill you. If it doesn't understand fear, it's not all of a sudden going to get up and run away. If you keep talking about that, he's going to think that's your topic of discussion. So sometimes in life, bad things happen to us so we can see, is it something we want? And it's almost like if you put your hand on a stove, well, it's going to hurt you, but you will pull away. The pain gives your body the ability to move away so you don't continue hurting yourself. Now, we've all burned ourselves, I'm sure. And I'm sure our parents have told us when we were kids, don't touch the stove, you'll hurt yourself. How do we find out life experience? It's by doing, even accidentally. And that's the difference between education and wisdom. Education is when somebody else is trying to teach you whatever it is they're trying to teach you. Now, that could be their perception. They may be wrong. They may be misleading you. Who knows? But wisdom is your experience of what to do and what not to do. So somebody can tell you all your life when you're a child, oh, don't touch the stove, you'll burn yourself. But until you actually do it on purpose or accidentally and you feel that pain, you'll never experience what it's like 
And that's why somebody can teach you about war. And it could be a somebody that was in a war and they could tell you all the things that they perceived of that war. But until you experience it, you'll never understand it in the level that they do. And that's one of the things I've learned, even with people on YouTube. There are different levels of consciousness. And consciousness is nothing more than your awareness and your ability to sense vibration, love, understanding, compassion. Lower vibrations is all about hatred, jealousy, the, the negative things. And I had to discover what I didn't want, and it had to be presented to me. And once you realize that you cannot change the outside, because technically everything's inside, because when you're seeing, you're seeing inside your brain. So I highly recommend, if people want to learn more about this stuff, to start learning about quantum mechanics, quantum physics, and all the new sciences, like from people like Greg Braden and plenty of others. And you'll realize that, like they say in Row, Row, Row Your Boat, life is but a dream, and it's not what you think it is. But people on a lower vibration are automatically going to be afraid of those things. They're going to dismiss them. And the first thing they use is anger because it's a defense mechanism. It's just like in a way, if somebody tickles you, if you don't like it, you're going to jump away. But it's all about your understanding and your ability to learn and create wisdom to have something confront you and you ignore it or try and fight it. You're actually saying to the universe, to God, to angels, to spirits, whatever you want, you're saying, I have to learn something from it. So you keep battling it. You keep trying to fight it. You keep being mad. You keep ignoring and say, no, no, I'm not going to listen. This is my life. Well, that's the reason why it keeps coming back. Because you haven't noticed when you're depressed or sad or angry or have some kind of problem, maybe even the people you date, you keep dating the same people over and over again. It's because somebody up there, whatever it is, whether it's consciousness, a physical being, I don't know. It's not my place. But somebody up there is going, hello, McFly. Why aren't you listening? You're asking for help. And I'm presenting what you don't want. I'm telling you to pull away and you don't. That's like putting your hand on the stove and you sit there and say, wow, this really hurts and this is unfair and God, this is killing me and why does this always happen to me and I can't believe I'm doing this and listen to my skin boil. What are you doing to yourself? You're hurting yourself and as you keep it there, you make it worse. So if you would have touched the stove and instantly pulled away and realized that the pain was to help you. You now got wisdom through a bad situation and you learn something to help yourself. Because just imagine if you did not experience pain. Well, you'd have your hand there. You wouldn't feel anything. You wouldn't know it's there. You might leave it there. And all of a sudden, you turn your hand around and there's no skin left and all the, the meat is burnt. And now your hand is useless. Well, if you look at life that way, then isn't it beneficial we experience pain? So when you're depressed, you're unmotivated. If you get yourself to be in a better place where you say, you know what, I can't control the outside, even though it's inside, but I can control how I perceive what's going on. So if I don't like something, instead of saying, whoa, that always happens to me, think in a different way. Like instead of saying, for example, if you're one of those people that always gets the red lights when you're late for work, what do you do? You say, oh, this always happens to me. Every time I'm late, the lights have to turn red. So what you're doing is because of everything, like I said, is electricity and magnetism. You're sending out the message of every time I go to work, the lights are red. So someone, something or whatever is perceiving that as, well, I guess that's what they want because they keep talking about it. So you change your perception instead of saying, why does this always happen to me when I go to work and I'm late? It's always red light. You start saying to yourself, now I'm going to start having lights turn green and I'm no longer going to be late for work. And it might not work right away, but you'll notice a difference after a while. It's amazing how much you can change physical reality through your thoughts and feelings, but it all has to be genuine. It has to be sincere. It has to come from the heart because you can't fake sincerity. You cannot fake it because if you do, the only person you're hurting is yourself. So I know there'll be some people that'll say things like sarcastically. It's like, oh, all I have to do is just say the light turns green and that's what will happen. And then they'll never get it happening. 
Why? Because they weren't genuine. They weren't being honest with themselves. You can lie to other people. You can even lie to yourself, but you can't lie to truth. It just doesn't work. So just imagine instead of being depressed and saying, woe is me, I can't change what Fukushima did. I can't change the food that we eat. I can't change the water that we drink. Because like they say, whether you're wrong or right, you're right. Because you're, in other words, what they're saying is you make up your own destiny based on what you believe. Because belief is nothing more than perception. Like, for example, if you take something like this and shine a light through it so it shows a shadow on the wall. Well, if you put it in this direction, you're going to see a circle as your shadow. Well, if you put it in this direction, guess what? You're going to see a rectangle on the wall. Perception. That's what life is all about. That's why when we talk about religions, we talk about um, sexual preferences, you talk about beliefs. It's nothing more than a person's perception. And we don't understand it from another person's point of view. So that makes us angry. It makes us hate them. And what does that do? It lowers our vibration. And then... It hurts and affects us, but it's a choice. So when you're depressed about Fukushima or 9-11, and I can understand why, but you don't motivate yourself. Now, I'm not saying go around and pretend the world is with bliss and just go have parties and ignore everything. No, like anything in life, it has to do with moderation because too much of anything is bad for you. I mean, somebody could say something like, oh, I could never have too much sex. Well, just imagine if you did. Just imagine 24 hours a day, nonstop, you had a different, either beautiful man or beautiful woman come into your room. And every second when you're finished, another person comes in. Well, guess what? Just imagine a week of doing that nonstop. No sleep. You're very sensitive. You're extremely tired. You can't keep up with that forever. So too much of anything is not good for you. It's all about understanding and balance. So it's not one side of the spectrum where you're nothing but depressed and you just sit in your room saying, woe is me. And the other side isn't just, aha, everything's wonderful. I'm going to look at the bright side of life no matter what. And I'm just going to be happy and ignore the obvious. No, you have to find the middle ground where I can be upset about the negative things, but I can be happy enough to motivate myself to want to change them. So who's to say you're not the person that invents a new creation that cleans the air? or helps information that helps inspire another person who does good for someone else or you save an animal and it inspires other people to want to do the same or even you just make a video that all of a sudden awakens people like maybe what mine is doing right now it's okay to be happy but it's not okay to use it as a mask and it's not okay to not be genuine and that's the things i've learned about the haters and everything that want to bring me down I can't stop what they do, but I can stop the way they tried to make me feel because the way I reacted was my choice, but I had to learn from it. So it served a purpose. And if you look at it that way, then you're glad it happened. So I appreciate what those people tried to do. Now, that doesn't change what they did and why they did it. But if I can take it as I was having my hand on the stove, and for some reason, I was complaining about it. I was letting it affect me. I was bothered by it, and yet I kept my hand there. Well, whose fault is it that my hand is burned? Now that I pull away, no longer hurts. So use this as motivation. Use this as a tool. Learn that life is how you perceive it, and you create it through your thoughts and through your feelings. So if, you're, if your choice is to be depressed then don't be surprised if you're listless, if you're unmotivated, if you're tired, if you're alone, if you're not doing anything productive, and not, definitely not happy. Or you could find the middle ground and motivate yourself to do something. And that's why I'm making the organic products that I do and the Oregon pyramids that I do and having a good massage business and having fun doing my DJ business. Because I'm creating beauty. I'm creating relaxation. I'm creating art. And some people will never understand that, but that's okay. 
That's the thing I had to learn. It's this their perception of what they view. And if they want to turn it into anger, let them. And somebody made a comment in one of my videos that said, am I the only person that subscribes here just to dislike his videos? And I said, well, you know, if that's what you want to do with your life, if the, the time you have and the limited energy you have in life, because we don't have unlimited energy, at least in this physical form, because we are born, we grow, and one day we die, who knows where we go from there because light cannot be extinguished and we are electrical beings. I mean, look at your nerve endings. That's why we're made of exclusively, primarily of water and electricity because water is a great conductor of electricity, especially salt water, which is why we have so much metals and sodiums because they're conductors. But if people really don't understand where they're going in life, I lost my train of thought, but um, oh, um, they were saying about how um, they wanted to dislike my videos. And I said, if that's the amount of energy you want to use, because again, we have limited amount of energy, you know, just go and try and get up out of bed and run and never stop. You'll collapse and you'll probably die if you do it for too long. So we have limited energy. If there are people out there that want to take whatever limited energy they have to use it on negativity, don't be surprised if their lives are full of negativity, if they're not full of anger, if they're not alone, if they're not with somebody who is their soulmate, and they're just with somebody because they're afraid to be alone, and they're not happy, and they have jobs they hate, and instead of learning from it, they have to try and hurt others to make themselves feel better. So I responded to that comment. The old me would have been offended, would have blocked it, or whatever. But the new me said, if that's what you want to do with your limited energy, if you want to take your limited energy and the limited time during your day to subscribe to my channel just so you can dislike the, my videos, you go ahead and do that. Leave it to the smart people to cure cancer. Leave it to the brave people to fight against oppression. But you do your dislikes. That just shows their limited range and ability. This is the, these are the people that we want creating, inspiring, teaching our children. No, thank you. Feel better about yourself, but no, you can still be upset about things. But don't let it overwhelm you. That's why I don't listen to people like Alex Jones and others that talk about fear porn. Because their job is to hammer you with so much that you get depressed and say, oh, there's nothing I can do about it. Well, if that's what you think, then guess what? You're right. Because think about it. If you say there's nothing I can do, well, guess what? You're going to do nothing. So you've created that paradigm shift. But you can turn around and say, well, this sucks. And I don't like what's going on. But I'm going to do everything in my power to not let it continue, or at least not let it affect me. So guess what? You proved them wrong. And that's the beautiful thing about everything in the universe. There is no such thing as a straight path. Because even if you have predictions and people say, oh, I know the future and I can read the future, they're reading one line of, of an infinite universe. Like, I'll give you an example. See this? If I let go of this, it's going to drop and hit the table. So I can guarantee through my perception of the future that if I let go of this, it's going to drop and hit the table. So watch. I'm going to let it go, and it's going to drop and hit the table. Uh-oh. What happened? Well, I changed the, the course of the future of this tape because instead of just letting it drop, I changed the outcome and it didn't drop. So if somebody would have just said, I can't control life, guess what? You allow it to happen. Isn't that choice? But it, because I decided to stop it, I changed the outcome, even though it was supposed to be inevitable. That's how easy life is if you see it that way. So I'm going to leave this video at this point. If that doesn't motivate you at this point, nothing will. But keep in mind, guys, and I used to say this to my clients all the time. Even the best cars in the world need to refuel. It's okay. Just don't go to the extreme one way or the other. Find the middle ground. And don't let hatred 
keep you on that lower vibration because there are going to be people. There's plenty of people that can be angry and do nothing but hate. That's easy. That requires no effort whatsoever. It's easy to hate someone. It takes a lot of effort to inspire, to bring out good, to do your part, to contribute, to sacrifice. That's what those people will never get. And it's not our job to try and convince them. They're supposedly adults. Let them figure it out. If you want to be bitter and angry, then don't complain about your life being not what you want. Because that's what you choose. You get what you give. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. And don't forget to have your trolls spayed or neutered. Peace.